Hey, what's up, everybody? It's AJ with Hippie Fertilizing. Come hop on the SSB train with me, toot toot. And uh, let's learn a little bit about more about soil biology, how it applies to your lawn, and what we should do about it, okay? So, today, um, a topic that I think I'll probably go over a lot because it's largely overlooked is organic matter, all right? What is organic matter? Organic matter is decayed, plant life, animal life. Uh, so we can even consider like the little bacteria that dies in the soil, like little tiny animals. So they're dying all the time, but they're not big enough necessarily to do what we want unless we give it everything a very long time. And that's not what we want, right? We're in the microwave age. We want to go boop, you know, three minutes later, my soup is done, we're going. <clears throat> so. I live here, like in League City, do a lot of lawns, League City, south of Houston. What do we have? Gumbo, right? And then on these new developments, we have tons more clay, right? If you don't have that original gumbo clay, we have lots of, like, I don't know, builder clay and sand. What we're lacking is organic matter. Now, why is this important? This organic matter, this humus, all right, is made of long uh, carbon molecule chains that are harder to break. And the cool thing is, is that they're very porous, right? So they can absorb water, they can absorb nutrients, they house, uh, they're like apartments and condominiums and resorts for microbes, right? So you add organic matter to your soil you're improving soil structure, you're improving your ability to absorb moisture, retain moisture, for air and water to flow better, um, and you give the things that we need in our soil, the soil biology, right, hop on this SSB train, toot toot, uh, a better place to live. Now I've seen this over the years, you know, people always call, hey do you do a core aeration? I'm like nah, I don't do that. I do a lawn top dressing. It's like allows you to promote what's called soil flocculation without mechanical dis disturbance, which would be that core aeration. Um, now we'll be trying to blend both this year, doing some different testing elements to see, you know, how can we raise our game in this? Because hey, uh, number one, I mean, who wants to waste their time, right? There's a lot of info out there. Does it really work? And I hear from customers all the time, like, oh, I had such and such company do a core aeration and, you know, did X, Y, and Z, didn't really do anything. And here's what I know to be true. That's because none of these other guys are saying, hey, we need to put compost down on the soil. What is compost? Compost is organic matter. It is humus. It is long chains of carbon molecules that will feed more of your soil biology in a super healthy way. All right, plus another kind of cool thing is that uh, all this humus, right, has different electrical charges. Y the more stuff you have in your soil, to a degree, um, really helps out with a thing, and of course, as I try and say it right now, the words elude me, uh, I'll get back to that because that is so annoying. <clears throat> um, however, right, it's something that goes overlooked all the time. And I think it's interesting. Like people want to do composting in their backyards. That's great, right? And if you got a little garden and stuff, I, that's wonderful. But let's be real here. You're trying to top dress like, you know, three, four, five, six thousand square feet. We need bulk material. And let me tell you, the average person is not creating this amount of humus and processing it correctly to where they could like top dress their own lawn, right? It's called paramagnetic soil properties. Boom, that's the word. Uh, so, and I'm sure you've heard like the term grounding, right? Well, everything has charges. And so this gets very important. We'll get more into details about that later. But 
organic matter, humus, helps out with these electrical charges and these things that need to happen in soil that are going to further help out with your plant health or your turf health, right? Because something, again, that I see year after year after year, lots of rain, lots of sun, lots of heat. I'm in Texas, all right? We had many days that the real feel last year was over 110. Dry, hot, all the above. My lawns that I heavily top dressed earlier in the year all performed better than the ones that I did not. And so, you know, you may be asking a fair question. Why don't you do it to every lawn? Well, it's not necessarily my choice all the time. I can suggest it. That's up to you. But as a viewer, okay, uh, or a person who may be trying to find out what's the best thing to do to my lawn, high quality compost is an excellent thing. Very thin. You only need to put down like an eighth of an inch, right? You don't need a whole lot, but even coverage is amazing. This does take a while to really see the benefits. It is not an overnight thing, but of all the things that I do to lawns, I'm telling you, humic acid, seaweed, molasses are like at the top. Um, and then boom, top dressing, right? Adding that organic matter, that humus, building up a better soil structure for your soil biology to flourish, even in rougher conditions. When it gets really, really wet for too long, and when it gets really hot and dry for too long, right? Something that uh, I've learned is that, say you're, we get rain for like a week, right? Well, brown patch starts popping up, all that fun stuff. But here's another thing that's happening. A lot of what's on that top layer, right, is aerobic. So it needs oxygen. If it rains too long, it literally drowns. So this is... Again, where organic matter uh, comes into play, humus comes into play because it's helping your soil naturally stay more porous so that way it can like technically breathe. You get a break in the rain, boom. Uh, those low spots that are staying like a puddle don't last quite as long. Everything can go back to homeostasis, right? A little easier. Um, plus, you know, huge thing, uh, and I'm just gonna say, I really don't care what kind of fertilizer you use. I mean, do, it's way better if it's more natural, organic, what have you. But my point with this is, no matter what kind of fertilizer you use, the more humus and organic matter that you have in your soil, especially if you're around where we are, okay, your conditions may be different if you're in a different zone, but... I'm really talking about for the South Houston people, okay? It's the Gulf Coast, right? Where we have southern lawns. A lot of us need two things. More organic matter. I know I've repeated it a lot. I'm sorry. Uh, but also sand. Together, right? So if you're gonna do a core aeration, and I'm sorry if I seem like I'm getting a little off topic here, but... You really want that thing to work well? Go spread some compost in those holes, all right? Along with a natural organic fertilizer. I will have my favorites listed below, all right? Uh, so if you do a core aeration, all right? Simple way, use something like Humates Plus. Fill back up those holes with Humates, which is a very long chain carbon, all right? And along with some other soil foods, seaweed, humic acid, molasses, microbes, stuff like that. The other best thing to use would be MicroLife Hybrid. Uh, really excellent product. That urea-methylene in there is a stellar source of nitrogen. It's slow release. Uh, it has carbon molecules bonded to the nitrogen, so it requires microbial activity to tear them apart. And that's what makes it a slow release. It's really, really excellent. Urea form does this. There's a couple different things that do this. Uh, but those types of products, uh, in terms of nitrogen, are my favorite. All right? Um, so, you know, 
again, something that is largely overlooked in lawn care, uh, organic matter, compost top dressing. It, in my experience, is far superior than, say, a core aeration. And, you know, fertilizing everything has its place for sure. But if we want like the best and we want kind of the best overall throughout all the extremes that our lawn is going to experience, adding humus and organic matter is your best bet. Okay. So I hope this helps. Again, thank you for hopping on the SSB train, support soil biology, get it some good old carbon, some compost, stuff like that. And check the down below for a little bit more information. Peace. <laughs>